Morning's here. Winds from the night before have come to a halt. I am waking up before the rest of camp and decided to take the opportunity to explore. I find myself on the Sioux Reservation overlapping the Dakotas, living among other natives and indigenous peoples from around the continent, along with allies from around the world fighting to keep the oil in the soil. Grabbing my bag for my harvest, I set out in the early morning light of golden blue to find what Mother Earth has personally and spiritually to offer me. The need within me to walk about camp rises, and I start to take in the spirit that has been seamlessly brought to life in each of us with each breath. There are hundreds of people still as slumber. Some of the elders are awake, getting the fire hot for breakfast, while others are preparing for the day and fight ahead. Winter is just around the corner. I begin to step lightly upon the dry grasslands as I enter a field of wild sage. I can feel the warm sun on my face as I turn to him for a sense of rebirth in this moment. He's hot on me, but my body still holds the wet rains from the night before within my bones. As I begin to harvest sage, I am thinking of the intent I have for these sacred pieces. This harvest is intended for my elders back home and my loved ones who need the spirit of the wild awaken within them. Wild sage is home to these lands, sacred land of the Sioux. With my fingers smelling of sweet lemon and my bag full of nature's medicine, I find myself needing to release the stagnant energy and pressures from the world that have been building within me. The morning air is still fresh. Like the ground, it's wet and moist. Everyone is still asleep, tired from the ceremonies and discussions on how we will make it through winter and how we will continue to protect ourselves from the growing number of police and military force. By this time, I have my yoga mat in hand and have safely laid out my lemon sage to dry. I begin to make my way to the tallest hill within camp. As I make my way over, I find myself trying to walk the Claire's path underneath the sun. In the cold air, his warm embrace is what my body is seeking so desperately for. Blessings from the sun after a night like we experienced during the windstorm is something we all need right now. His rays being a reminder of the light that is soon ahead in this seven month protest thus far. I now find myself face to face with the horses in their pens, reminiscing of moments before when they were racing through Camp Bareback. The look of freedom in each of the riders' faces, mixed with the determination within the animal's charge, will be something I will never forget. A horse of dark brown and pale white walks up to me. He's curious if I will feed him. His glance into my eyes tells me that he fully understands me and my purpose for fighting. Grabbing a small handful of hay, I pass it through to him through the gate and we are both connected and allies in this moment. Just a few more feet to the top of the hill. I am not alone in wanting to view and meditate on top of the highest point in camp. There is an elder quietly looking towards the water, his eyes gazing intently as if he can see the past, present, and future. Dressed in jeans with a bandana, his mind is in deep thought. I snap a picture to never forget his intent and continue my journey to the top. The sun is still warm as I begin to lay out my yoga mat. The grass is tall, still wet, so when I lay my mat down, I find myself sitting in a small hole within the tall grass as though it is protecting me. I remove my socks so I am able to ground myself and extend my muscles within my toes as so to let the energy flow from their tips. I breathe in and I breathe out. Reaching to the sky through mountaintop again, I breathe in and I breathe out. Cold air fills my lungs, but the hot sun is upon my face. I breathe in, I breathe out. In my mind, I am thanking the creator for the sights around me. I am also thanking the creator for allowing me to find my way to this bit of land with hundreds of my extended family surrounding me and protecting me from the evils that be. I breathe in and I breathe out. Bending forward into a forward fold, I begin to reposition my toes, spreading them out to hug the ground and begin to feel the energy being housed in my lower back, streamlining its way up my spine. I breathe in and I breathe out. The sun's heat at this point is causing steam to rise from the grass. The elder I mentioned from before is still meditating on the moment that is before us. I breathe in and I breathe out. Back into mountaintop, I am reaching towards the sky my eyes fixated on the skies above. It's hard for me to believe that just the night before, the sky was filled with the dark clouds pouring out rain as if the land had never received an ounce of water in its past time. Remembering the winds that forcefully shook my tent, making it unsafe for us to wander around the main campsite. With the flat lands, the weather moves in and out of the area quickly. 
the winds are able to carry the clouds forward and onward into the mountains. The storm has passed and new light has begun to bless us. I breathe in and I breathe out. As more and more of my extended family awake from their slumber, I decide I should begin my closing thoughts, asking myself the question of what I will do after returning and experiencing a moment like this, a moment where the world is watching, but in our reality, we are safe from the world. The fight we were in was personal. It was us against the government, and the world could only watch from their phones and television. There wasn't any service where we were. We could only be in the moment. Us against the government. I breathe in and I breathe out. We honor this invitation here for this paddle on your river. We just hosted a paddle on a journey in our territory. We called it the Quotma. Don't forget the water. Our people, our mountain, that's the name of our mountain. We call her Mount Rainier. We call her the Quotma. My name is Hawikwadaya Hanford McLeod. The Squally Tribal Council member here. Skipper of this canoe family. We've been skipper of this family for 10 years. We honor this invitation here because we understand the importance of what's happening. Water is life. And we understand that. As Native people, we appreciate what you're doing here, but we also appreciate paddling up your river today and yesterday. Although yesterday was a great adventure for us when the rain came down upon us. <laughs> As coastal people, we're used to the rain, but not rain like that. <laughs> we loved it. It washed away a lot of that, what we, we're bringing here also, so we can come here in a good way. Our people at home, understand what we're doing here for you as we came across the Turtle Island here, Mother Earth, to be with you. So on this journey here that we brought to you today, our people, our young ones here, our elders, we brought 60 people with us in eight cars. We brought our young ones here. We brought our royalty and our elders to be a part of this, to witness this. We told them to witness this, what's happening. Because it's coming across to our area also. You know, they dig up the coal here and they pump out the oil and they ship it over to Washington so they can ship it across the water to China. But they don't use it either. So what they understand is they're doing this just for money. They do it because it's a way of them continuing this cycle in their way. But as Native people, as coastal people, the upbringing of my family here, my dad, Don McLeod Jr., Joyce, my grandma, Yessie Blue, Janet McLeod, Don McLeod, stood up and fought for the fishing rights in our area. Sure.